I'm going to start this off by doing something outrageous. No, I'm going to keep my clothes on. <laughs> but I don't think any YouTuber has done this before. Not that I'm aware of. And I really don't care. I'm going to share with you my lifetime stats since I've been on YouTube. Right there, that is two years worth. You can see my total views, total watch time that has been invested into my videos. What they don't show you is how much time I've invested into making videos. I've got about 2,000 hours worth of videos out there now. It took a lot longer than that to make them. And so far, I have earned $485. <laughs> no joke, folks. That is true. My point, you, the viewer, better be getting the value out of these videos. Somebody needs to. <laughs> so I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday. It is July 19th. Tomorrow, being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. Me and my co-host, we go on live every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're there for about an hour, and we're there for one reason. To talk to our viewers about the stocks they want to talk about. I talk to you all week about them. This gives you a chance to tell me what stocks you want us to look at. And me and my co-host, I do believe this week it will be Taylor. Taylor and I will look over the information, the charts. We'll give you our honest opinion from two different points of view. And whatever that's worth, it's honest. At least you can say that. However, if you're serious about wanting your ticker looked at, we are only there an hour. And even though I'm not real popular, we are getting more tickers than we can look at. We got to give each one a little bit of time. So if you want to get your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early. I put up a placement for this show at 2.30 in the afternoon, and you can put your ticker in there then. Just let me know what it is, and before we're even online, I'll be looking at yours and getting it all lined up to talk about. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Now, in this show, we like to focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under 5 bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I say potential is found in the charts more so than the news. So that's why I do my research. I look for charts that have heat. When I find a chart that's hot, then I go doing research into the filings and the press releases looking for a catalyst. And I got some of those sort of stocks to share with you right now. Now we got a theme that just kind of fell together today. I wasn't trying. All three of these companies have gone through mergers, change of control, and they have brought in more revenues the best of the best. So first one we're taking a look at is MRT, Marty Technologies. Now Marty just came on the market 7-11, July 11th. She came on through a reverse merger. She was dealing with Galata. They completed their business transaction on July 11th. They are on the New York Stock Exchange. What this company does they're a Turkish company. They are over in Turkey. They were founded in 2018. Marty is a Turkey leading mobility app offering multiple transportation services to its riders. Marty has launched a ride hailing service that matches riders with drivers traveling in the same direction. We used to call that hitchhiking. <laughs> and operates a large fleet of e-mopeds, e-bikes, and e-scooters. <laughs> is this what we're pairing up on? I don't know. All of Marty's offerings are serviced by proprietary software systems and Internet of Things infrastructure. The ticker used to be GLTA. Now we have MRT. She finished the day at $1.59 with almost 21% gains. She is a shell company. At least that's what she was before all of this happened. Now looking at the chart, in my opinion, it's hot. But if you look at it initially, you go, you're kidding. It is clandestine. You've got to look closer. The big picture doesn't give a good reveal because there's only so much time on the chart. And I think it's hot. I think what's going on here is going to make the chart move. So what was the relative volume around the company today? See, that's a huge jump. We went from about a half a million to 12 and a half million. You're looking at 25 times her volume there. Woo! Share structure for the company. Um, we can get this information from the 20F that just came out. A 20F is a financial. It's what they bring out when a new company comes on. This was a private company. 
So their financials are not public. Nobody knew anything about this company except Galata. They knew. Well, now that they are a public company, they've got to make all the information about them public. And boy, we got a lot here. Swear to God, there's got to be 150 to 200 pages here, and we're not going through them. If you really want to know, you got lots of good reading here. But they told us about the share count here since we had nothing over at the OTC yet. New Marty has 200 million shares authorized. That's what they have in the bank. That's the maximum amount that they could ever put on the market as it stands right now. They have uh, 48 and a half million on the market. 48 and a half million, and they say they have 7.1 million outstanding warrants and 7.2 million private placement warrants. What this means is that down the road, three and a half, five years down the road, these warrants could be possibly converted into shares. So you could be looking at another 14, 15 million shares being added on years down the road, most likely. But right now we are at 40 million and I'm not sure what the float is. They haven't told us. We've got the same situation looking at the financials. We don't have any information over here because they just got here. Now, I told you they have filed one, the 20F. That is their most recent financial, and it's big. And I did go looking to find what their income has been, how much money they're making. I couldn't find it. Honest to God, there was a lot of numbers there. I just couldn't put my finger on the one I was looking for. But I didn't quit looking. I looked elsewhere and I found that information over here at their own website. This is marty.tech, their investor page. Their regular website is in Turkish, but the investor page is in English. Well, they tell us here that Marty reports strong third quarter 2022 financial results. And they were very strong. They tell us that their third quarter net revenue increased by 23% to $8.9 million net revenue, not gross. It had an increase of 23% to almost 9 million in three months. Furthermore, they tell us down the page here that they did 18.8 .8 million the full year. Annual revenues. We'll divide that by four quarters. That would make each quarter roughly $4.5 million. Well, their last quarter was more than double that. So they are having a strong increase in business right now, whatever it is they're doing. Now we got a quote down here from the founder of the company. He's part of the management, Marty. I always get excited when I see management has the founder included. The founder is the one that invented the business. He's the father. This is his baby. He's not going to let anything happen to it. He's going to do everything he can to make this business succeed. So I love seeing that. Well, he tells us here that through 2022, they increased their fleet to about 36,000 vehicles, and they're getting an average of three rides per vehicle. We'll multiply that out. That's over 100,000 rides a day. That's how they're making their money. So they're making money. They're coming from a shell company, making nothing, to, well, we looked at $9 million in the last quarter of 2022, and now that they are a public company, they have capital to work with. They can invest in themselves. That's why people like going public. They get money from us and other investors. Now let's go look at this very small chart that has a lot of potential. Let's take a look at that mystery breakout stock, ticker MRT. We're going to do our charting on Thinkorswim, TOS, and you can get this free just by signing up at TD Ameritrade, and that's free too. So this is a six-month, four-hour view from Marty Technologies. We don't need that. She's only been on the market eight days. But this is what I saw when I found her. I searched through the stocks browsing the four-hour charts, and that caught my attention. Oh, we just got another bar. That last red bar was not here. This is my third take doing this. That was not there. What I was going to say to you before that bar rudely interrupted me was this has been falling from a start price. Are you ready for this? At $10. Yeah, eight days ago, this was $10. She has fallen all the way down to a low of yesterday of $1.18. Then I seen these three bars. That, to me, is a start of a change of trend. That's what I look for when I'm trading. Three green bars before I think anything's changed. Well, it caught my interest. Look at the volume. Every one of these was getting bigger and bigger, and she had three green bars. 
So I figured, well, let me go take a look at this and see what's going on. And she had something going on. Then when you start focusing in on the smaller time frames, it does start looking better. Now we have a 50-day SMA coming into the picture. A fall is a fall. We don't have to look at the fall. But you can see that volume clearer now. You can see she bounced off of that low bubble, went sideways the whole day overnight till this morning. She broke through that 50. Lots of volume. She's fallen up underneath it, sitting on top of the 20. Oscillators are not falling. I'm not going to say they're climbing, but they're not falling. That's okay. Let's come on down to 15 minutes. We normally don't look at this one, but we can see some strength, right? Now we've got a 200-day SMA in the picture. You can see she has broken through that multiple times. It's still coming down. It's not totally flat yet. It is still coming down. She has fallen right back to her 50, did not lose any strength doing all that, beat it, broke it, came back down. I believe she is getting ready to do this again. Now I see we've got aftermarket activity. It is falling right now. I'm not real crazy about that, but it is real and it is live. Looking at our five day, five minute. All right, now we have a 200 for the full chart. This is our first one. You can see how much volume has come into the picture today. The 200 was falling very hard. And just today, today, she leveled off and turned. She is now pushing up. We had a lot of strength today. She went up high. She hit a high here of $1.91, starting the morning off at $1.37. That was about 35% gains. And then she gave it all away, but she came down on top of the 200. She was under it here, beating, beating, got up on top, and now she's jumping on top, making sure it's strong. It's going to be a support. She's going to build a staircase or a ladder, depending on how eager she is. And it looks like she's ready to continue climbing. Oscillators, they're not too exciting right now. They're not falling. They're just kind of hanging on. I think it's a good bet. You've got a company here that fell from $10 and is very low right now. She's at $1.64. She's got revenues. At the end of third quarter, she was doing $9 million in three months. Don't know what she's doing right now. Maybe you can find it in the 20F. So the next quarterly report we get is going to be a lot easier to read, and it should be exciting. And they've got business, and it's growing, right? So MRT, put it on your watch list. We just had another bar. This stock is getting attention. As you can see, the volume is coming in, and that's key to any play. The next hot penny stock we're taking a look at comes from the OTC market. And we've looked at this one before, back in October. This is ticker AMIH, American International Holdings Corp. Now, she's had a change of operations as well. She's not doing the same thing she was doing back when we looked at her. Matter of fact, she's had a lot of changes since we looked at her. She used to be on the QB, the middle tier of the OTC. She's now down here on the bottom pink level. She used to be four cents. She is now down to double zero two five. That's a lot of falling. And her business back then was e-scripts. She was working with mail order drugs. She went out and made a lot of acquisition of pharmaceutical companies and built a nice subsidiary called Zip Doctor. Do you remember it? She sold it to Cosmos, ticker COSM. That's why everybody was playing her back in October. Well, this company still operates Zip Doctor, but Cosmos owns it. And I'm sure they're getting some sort of revenues or royalties for doing that. Nobody works for free. And since then, the company has made another acquisition into oil and natural gas. And that's become their operations. And we'll look at that news here in a minute. The charts? Okay, it's another clandestine breakout. You look at the charts and you don't see anything until you get closer. When you get closer, it looks really good. So AMIH, she finished the day at that double zero two five and she broke even, no losses, no gains today, is on the pink tier and current, has that verified profile, transfer agent verified, we're always looking for. Very important if you're trading a pink on the OTC, you don't get very much validated information with pinks. That's what we're talking about here, validated information. So that looks good. She's also got independent directors. You don't need to have independent directors up here unless you have plans on uplisting. So that says a lot. So this is the company they made the deal with, Cycle Energy Core, and it looks like they're possibly changing their name. 
Psycho Energy Core is a diversified energy company based in the state of Texas and currently operates three vertically integrated businesses. Cycle's flagship intellectual property is its mobile gas to liquid system. This is used to convert natural gas and other gaseous hydrocarbons into longer chain hydrocarbons such as gasoline or diesel fuel. Now for a little bit more information since we're talking about the company here, this is a news press that just came out recently, June 29th. This is an update letter from the CEO. On March 27, 2023, the company announced that it had completed the acquisition of Cycle Energy Corp, a diversified energy company based in the state of Texas, currently operating three vertically integrated businesses. On June 9th, the outgoing team and the incoming team worked seamlessly together to complete and file the 10K for 2022 and now nearing completion of the 10Q for 2023. You got two companies here, two managements, and two financials. You got to now merge all those numbers together. That takes a lot of work. They closed this deal back in March, and this is the end of June, July. So they are working hard to get this done, and they've almost got it. They tell us here that the past few months, the Electra production team has been focusing on maintaining the previously announced average production of approximately 500 barrels per month. So they're keeping the revenues coming in while working within the constrained budget and cash flow while management restructures the company. There are still approximately 120 wells that are available in their current leases that can be brought into production if they need them. They tell us here that the company is currently looking at several possible bolt-on properties to their existing leases as acquisition candidates. Now that the integration of the companies is nearing completion, management will begin to approach potential candidates in this area. Cycle oil and gas production operations are currently focused on Wichita and Wilbarger counties. However, intends to expand that focus through the area into neighboring counties. So let's check out that relative volume for the company. Well, I'm sure it's not one of their best days. Lost about a half a million shares today, dropping from 3.4 million down to 2.9 million. Looking at the share structure for the company, we've got 195 million outstanding. Could have a float of 186 million. They say that's what it was April of this year. So there's a very strong likelihood we have a float of 186 million. Not a great float, but we've definitely seen worse. Is this company making any money? Yeah, they are, and it's more than $61. You gotta put three zeros behind any of the numbers on these charts, so that's $61,000, and they got to keep 55,000, not bad. Are they doing any better? Yeah, they are. Look, the last quarter of 2022, they did $48,000 of the 61,000 they did for the full year, picking up momentum. And here in the first quarter of 2023, they've already done $50,000. No, it's not a lot of money, but they're picking up momentum, and that's what you want to see. Disclosures. We've got two recent disclosures that you should just pop in and take a look at. I've already done it for you. 8K, some sort of management change going on. Not a big one as far as I could tell. And a 10Q, their most recent financial. Now, rather than running around Google or going through all of their news presses to see what the company's up to, just jump into the most recent financial. Everything from the day they started up until this date right there, that is everything. That's all the history for the company. So why waste your time running around? Just get used to reading these financials. They've got everything you're looking for. Let's jump on over to that news now. Most of this news is old. These are the only pieces of news that are current from 2023. This one came out in March. This is when they completed the acquisition of Cycle Energy. In April, they realized approximately 66% oil production increase over the first three months. So we do see that business is increasing. And then they have a commitment from Lion Pacific, or as a Pacific Lion, to invest $20 million into this company to buy common stock, not preferred shares, common stock. Now they can do this one of two ways. They haven't made the purchase yet. It's gonna be multiple purchases. They can either initiate the order and buy the stock at the price, or the company can ask Pacific Lion to make a purchase. If they do that, then they get the stock at a discounted price, 15%. Uh, below the lowest price over a 10-day average. 
but we've got someone who wants to buy $20 million worth of stock. And why not? Believe it or not, folks, oil is still a commodity. I know we're moving into EVs, but that is still a long ways away. And most people are not aware that we've got a very dire situation going on right now. Oil has always been bought using the American dollar. This is called OPEC. This was arranged all the way back, starting with Nixon, I think it was. And anybody who wants to buy oil in the world from OPEC, they've got to buy it in American dollars. Well, another organization has been put together between China and Russia, and you have to buy the oil in rubles and yen or yan or whatever they call the Chinese money, and it is growing fast. A lot of nations are going over there, and this has helped us be a dominant nation in the world. Now, if we're going to want oil, OPEC is limiting how much they are doing. They've already told us they are cutting back right now. They are producing less oil than the world needs. So more and more people are turning to this new group. Well, this is where companies like this can make out like bandits. We're going to need domestic oil. We need to get back into this game. And this company has a lot of oil fields that they can reactivate. So I think American International is worthy of considering. The chart... Let's go take a look at it. We're going to have to look close. You don't see it as soon as we look at it, so don't go fast forward into the next video. Not much to really see, right? This is ticker AMIH, American International Holdings. That's a six-month, four-hour chart, and it looks flat as a pancake. And this is what I saw browsing my four-hour charts looking for heat, and this caught my attention. I'll show you why. There was two reasons. One, that big burst of volume right there. There hasn't been a burst of volume in quite a while. Second, I could see she was slowly pushing up on her PPO here, but then she had a serious rip, and that ripped across the board. That's what caught my attention. But you really can't see anything until you zoom in. Well, I've zoomed in on a different chart because it's hard to do it. That is a zoom in. We are still on the four hour chart. You can see that right there. So she was falling, she was underneath the 50 when she hit this low bubble. She got on top of the 50, stayed up there for over a week, and then about four days ago, she made a break. She jumped really hard and fast with a directional, intentional breakthrough. She came up here with this long wick and then came right back down, not losing any strength. That's what I look for, a breakthrough with a long wick, come back down, back to home, do it again. Show me you're eager to go. Now she's jumping up and down on this nine-day SMA because she's getting ready to go. She wants to make sure this is solid. Everything looks good. Oscillators are starting to grow. The only thing that's weak right now is the RSI. When the price falls, the RSI falls. But you can see everything is set up beautifully. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view. So she was trying to get up over that 200-day SMA for quite a while on this one-hour chart. It wasn't until she broke out. That's when she did it. About five days ago, she got up on top of both the 50-day and the 200-day SMA and ripped. And she really ripped when the 50-day SMA crossed the 200 right there. That is called a golden cross. It is the most powerful technical on the board, arguably. And you can see she had a rip when that golden cross came into the picture. She's fallen back, came close to her 50, but has pushed up to the 20. And now she's trying to touch that 200-day haul. I keep talking to you about that. 200-day haul is like the 200-day SMA. And here recently, the prices have been respecting the 200-day haul. Looking at our five-day, five-minute view. What a rip. She went here from 0016 up to 0043. Uh, you're looking at 250% gains there, riding way above the 50-day uh, SMA. Came down, looked like she wanted to hang on to this. She was pushing up, and then she lost it. Why do I think she lost it? Because the 200-day SMA just came into the picture. If you watch my videos, you hear me say this often. I see, in many cases, I look at a lot of charts, when a new SMA comes onto the board, the price normally wants to gravitate to it. 
doesn't matter if this new SMA is above or below the price. The price wants to go to it. And it came in the picture here and she hit it. She came right down to it. I don't see any bad news. Now she has bounced off of it. That's good. She is testing it again. She's underneath. I think that's what she's going to do. She's going to bounce on it and get a reflect and go again. The oscillators don't say that right now. The oscillators say she's in trouble. So we're watching this one. Change of operations. Revenues are growing. They're just about ready to finish with all of their financials and start making some more acquisitions. Wouldn't you like to get in at a decent price? All right, folks, I got something extra for you. I've had extras for you before, but I forget to add them. So since I remembered, I'm putting it here right now. Already had my three stocks picked to talk to you about today, but I was still browsing charts because I like to do it. <laughs> and I found a whole bunch of other hot charts. So I've already done the first step of the due diligence. I have found the charts that have heat. Now you need to go check the filings and the press releases and see if there's any catalyst. So I've given you the tickers here. You can pause this so that you can get more information and see what's going on. But these are hot charts. In my opinion, I think each one of these have potential to run. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. But they are definitely set up. All right, now that you've got those, let's get on to that last stock. Our last hot penny stock is also on the pink tier of the OTC. This is BBTT, BTAB e-commerce group. Got a real small chart. It only starts June 5th. That's not only when the change of operations happened, that's when the change of control happened, change of name, change of ticker, a lot happened that day. And she was at a low of five cents that day, hit a high of 35 cents today, and fell back to 28 cents. Now she came into this through a reverse takeover, a reverse merger. We had a news press come out March 6th. The original company was American Seniors Association's Holdings Group. Their ticker back then was AMSA. They closed this deal with BTAB Group then. BTAB is an e-commerce company with operations in Australia, Hong Kong, China, India, UK, and the US. All the heavy hitter countries. Now the company acquired five subsidiaries, e-commerce subsidiaries from BTAB, and they have already generated $11 million last year. And they just put revenues on the books this year. First time ever, roughly a half a million dollars. And there's a lot more to come. So things are really looking good and exciting. So she finished today at 28 cents with about 16 and a half percent gains. She is on the pink tier and current and she's got those two green ticks we're always talking about. So she looks solid. Now she tells us down here she is an e-commerce company and she wants to help everybody, online, offline, little businesses, big businesses. Literally says she wants to become the world's largest product supplier for small businesses and e-commerce technologies. So they got big dreams. What was the relative volume around the company today? <laughs> Not much. They're working on that big dream. She dropped about one third today from about 21,000 shares down to 13,500 shares. Share structure for the company, this is good. Outstanding share count, I checked all of this in the financial they brought out with this deal. 695 million shares is the outstanding share count. The float is not 14 million as they say here, it's 21 million. It is in, well as a matter of fact, let's just jump on into that. This is the financial. This is combining the two companies. One is going out, one is coming in. This is the financial for American Seniors Association's Holdings Group following a change of control March 2023 as reported in the company's announcement. We now have a new address for the new company. We have a new website. So this is for the new company. So they tell us here that it, it is not a shell company anymore. They tell us they have had a change of control. Scrolling on down, we get a little more information about the outstanding share count and the float. This is where I got my information, so I know it's accurate. 21.7 million shares in the float. Down here, they give us more information about what the company does. You know what they do, but what do they own? Well, they say our corporate headquarters is located in Sydney and Perth, Australia. 
Both the offices have a combined space of approximately 325 square meters. We have a furniture manufacturing facility in Western Australia. The size of the factory is approximately 4,100 square meters, includes a product showroom of approximately 500 square meters. This facility also serves as a research and development center for new products. We have another product showroom for home products in Western Australia. The size of this one is approximately 1,200 square meters. And we have a warehouse in Western Australia. The size is approximately 1,000 square meters. So what else can we talk about here? Well, the financials, they got nothing annually because they just got here. And as I said, they got money on the books first quarter of 2023, $564,000, a half a million dollars. And they said they did $11 million with those five subsidiaries last year. So I'm expecting a lot more revenues to be coming. And that's exciting. Disclosures for this company. We have no disclosures whatsoever. So all we have is that news, and there really isn't a lot there. The company announced its closing of stock acquisition agreement with BTAB Group. I just showed you that one. That came out in March. And the company announces name change and the ticker change. That's it. They're making money. They have got a new business, and things are looking good. All we've got to consider now is that little itty-bitty chart. Taking a look at BTAB, this is a six-month, four-hour chart for BBTT. Her first day on the market was June 5th. She was at a low of about five and a half cents, hit a high of 20 cents. Virtually 400% run the first day on the market. She leveled off here at about 13 cents, went sideways and then grew. Went sideways and then grew. So I'm presuming she may go sideways and then grow. And that sideways area would be the time you'd want to buy her. She's on top of her 20. She's on top of her 9. And these are the only SMAs we got right now. And you can see our bars are starting to get bigger. We're getting more activity here. And the strength is growing in our oscillators. And what I see here is a perfect pattern on my ADX and PPO. This is my PPO, the blue line, percentage price oscillator. You read it like a MACD. You want the blue line over the pink and you want it climbing. This is my ADX. ADX tells me about trend continuation. When the line changes direction, it means your trend has changed directions. When you have a straight line, it means your trend is continuing. Well, when I see this blue line going up and that red line going down on my ADX, guaranteed 100% your price is climbing. So that is looking good. Our MACD is over the signal line and pushing up, and our RSI is at 56. 55 is as low as I like to see it. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view now. So there's that up sideways with very little activity, a big drop, and she came right back to home sideways again. Now she had a bounce off of the 50, and we're getting lots of action. Look at how big these bars are right now. And our oscillators are cooling off, actually. Yeah, she's actually climbing. You can see she's got an uphill incline, but our oscillators are starting to pull down. That could be a divergence. A divergence is when your oscillators are doing the opposite of what the price is. And what this tells you is there's going to be a trend change. That's what they're saying. Now we're looking at our five day, five minute. Riding on the 50 day SMA, had a nice bounce up, fell back. Bounce up, fell back. My goodness, what is she doing? Testing the 50-day SMA. Had a big spike down here. Now, I like to think of this spike as a foundation. Putting it in the ground. You come through the strong SMA, you stab it in the ground, so now you can build a bridge to continue climbing. This may continue climbing. That's what that is telling me. Oscillators, well, these are the best we've had right now. They're pretty much flat. They're not going down, they're not going up, they're flat. But look, look at our 50-day SMA. You can see it's climbing. You can see the price is getting higher and higher, but the oscillators aren't showing that. I think we've got a divergence going on here. I would keep my eye on BBTT. It's another company that's had a change of operations. We don't know a whole lot about them, but they're making money. And that's the bottom line. They took a shell company that wasn't making anything and they put a half a million dollars on the books already with what? Maybe another 10, 11 million to come this year? That's what we're hoping. 
I didn't ask you. What do you think of my Hawaiian shirt? Aloha. <laughs> Actually, it's not Hawaiian. I bought this in California, and it worked out there. It doesn't much work here in Michigan. But I thought I could get away with it online. So I've given you three stocks today, folks. They've all had change of operations. And these change of operations are bringing in much stronger revenues. And that's the bottom line with any stock. Acquisitions, mergers, change of operations. They're all supposed to help revenues. That's what we're investing in. Companies making money. So I've given you enough information to get you curious. Now go do some serious due diligence. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.